So let me first introduce Karen Edelstein. Karen's a GIS and mapping consultant who works for the Finger Lakes Land Trust. She's been using geographic information systems to map environmental issues for more than 12 years. She, uh, she also works as a mapping consultant for other organizations as well as the Land Trust, and we're delighted to have her and her, her maps tonight. So, Karen? I'm going to be pretty brief, but just to provide a little bit of explanation to the images that you've been seeing flashed on the screen as you've come, um, as you've come in. Um, there's a number of, ooh, there's a number of um, factors that go into determining where drilling is going to happen, and one of those is the depth of the Marcellus Shale, which does vary quite widely across the whole region. Um, up in the top, in the red, is the shallowest Marcellus Shale between um, 2,000 and 3,000 feet, all the way down into southeastern or uh, northeastern Pennsylvania, where the shale is found at, at depths of up to 9,000 feet. The thickness also varies in the shale. You can see, and that's uh, in the, the lower right-hand corner in northeastern PA. Um, the shale is quite thick over 700 feet thick, and that is a real target area because they can get more gas out of the shale because it's thicker. And as we get up into the Finger Lakes, um, into Tompkins County, you can see that it thins out considerably um, to around 100 feet. There have been a lot of movements, as you know, across the state for um, either banning or restricting gas drilling. Sorry about the slides advancing. Um, but the, the actions are, are ranging from full-out bans in various municipalities um, to moratoria that are in place, as well as discussions that are occurring across the region. Um, that dark black line indicates the northern extent of the Marcellus Shale, where it tops out at the surface. But obviously, um, there isn't going to be any drilling at that northern perimeter. However, those of you who have heard of the Utica Shale, which is about 2,000 feet deeper than the Marcellus, um, that covers most of um, New York up towards the Adirondacks. So um, these maps are really just dealing with the Marcellus region. Several counties have banned drilling on their county-owned lands, and you can see that Tompkins County is one of those. Um, and here's just a summary of all of the different actions that have been happening over, over time. So this is a map from the DEC, and you can see that um, that red line is the 2,000 foot depth where apparently um, gas drilling is, sorry, um, where gas drilling is less likely to occur um, below 2,000 feet below the surface is much more likely. And here's a little bit more detail. So surface disturbance is being banned on county, uh, on state-owned forests, wildlife management areas, and parks, as well as in the skinny, as well as in the Skinny Atlas watershed and the New York City watershed. And there's currently discussion about banning drilling in the Keuka County, or the Keuka Lake watershed. Just a little bit more detail, and there's that uh, the dashed red line showing the 2,000 foot depth um, north of which there's unlikely to be uh, as much exploration. Oops. Great confusion now because of the similarity in the terms of primary and principal aquifers. There is, according to the Eskice, no surface disturbance being allowed in these primary aquifers, which are major drinking water supplies for um, large populations. However, there are also principal aquifers, different from primary aquifers, where there is going to be limited surface disturbance only um, happening if there is a site-specific environmental impact statement, um, at least for the next two years. And I apologize for those of you who are red, green, colorblind. I thought about this afterwards. Um, but this, just, this does, just does show you the difference between where the, um, the primary aquifers are, 
primary aquifers in red, which are the ones that are completely off limits, and the green where um, it's, it's still in play with an environmental impact statement. This is an interesting map that Walter Hang and Toxics Targeting published this week, looking at where drilling brine has been spread on roads across the, um, across the state. And I was curious about that, so I made a map and I overlaid the primary aquifers and the protected trout streams. And you can see that there's quite a, uh, <laughs> well, y you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I th uh, there there's should be quite a concern, I think, in the public about where this brine water is being spread and the conduits that occur to our surface and, and, uh, and groundwater. So this is the result of Walter doing a freedom of information request. Um, we can talk about that later. I want to move through these slides because we do have a lot of speakers up. So the SGUIS also stipulates that there will be no drilling within a 2,000-foot um, buffer of a public drinking water supply, and that's about what that looks like. In addition, they talk about no drilling within 500 feet of a tributary of a public drinking water supply, and that's what that looks like. In addition, it, it explains how the 100-year floodplains, which have been mapped by FEMA, are also, as far as I understand, off, ooh, off limits um, for drilling. But I thought it was interesting when I overlaid that um, FEMA 100-year floodplain with the 500-foot um, 500, 500 buffer, it depends on where you are and what the topography is like, whether the 500-foot five, the buffer or the FEMA is going to um, provide you more protection. And I think it is something we should be thinking about, about whether um, if it is not a um, direct tributary to a public drinking water supply, are we just going to accept that the 100-year floodplains is, are adequate for protecting our ground and surface water? But that's a little editorializing. I guess that's that's it. I'll be around to talk uh, um, to anybody who wants to discuss the maps more, and they will be um, online on the TC Gas Map site. So thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Um,